What's up, Wolverines? I'm Matthew Bilvides. And I'm Luis Martinez. This is your news for today. This year, Belen hosted Tombola, and it was a total success. The Belen community had really been missing out since last year's Tombola had been canceled and held virtually over Zoom due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And for the first time ever, this year's Tombola was able to raise just over $1 million. There's two aspects of, of Tombola that are important. Um, the, the most important one is the fact that it is a community building event. To see all the parents come together, the, the students, you know, you see a sixth grader frying or, or, or you know, serving pan con vite and like really into working in their booth and making it successful. To me, that is definitely one of the most important things. But also the reason we have Tombola is to raise money for our, our student financial program. The fact that we reached this milestone just allows us to help more students in the coming year. So that is very important you know, for the whole Belen celebrates Black History Month. Guest speaker Desmond Alufa High spoke to our students yesterday in the Roka Theater. My name is Desmond Alufa High, and I'm the Director of Protocol and International Affairs for Miami International Airport. I am an immigrant from Nigeria, which is the most populous country in Africa. I was invited by Ms. Gutierrez, this being the uh, Black History Month, to come and share some insights about the African continent. Unfortunately, you know, in the news media, uh, most people hear about the uh, conflicts and uh, very negative uh, things about the African continent. So during ba Black History Month, I take the opportunity to provide some insights about the contributions of the African continent to the world. So those were some of the uh, issues uh, and stuff that I came to uh, share. Uh, we discussed uh, also uh, the, importance, uh, the important role that uh, Africa continues to play and contribute uh, to the world. So it was a pleasure for me uh, to join all of you this morning. This has been my first time uh, here, and I hope it, it would not be my last time. So thank you for the kind invitation. This past Saturday, the Belen Jesuit robotics team competed at the district championship. Nation Industries battled in a difficult five rounds of match play. Unfortunately, during alliance selection, after regular matches, our Wolverines were not selected as one of the alliance partners, and our co competition ended, ended. Over the past few select series, the seniors have participated in intramurals. Ultimate Frisbee. The tournament has finally been decided. Head coach Lucas Eran had this to say after the thrilling game. So what's it like being on the winning team, you may ask? This guy knows. Took my team to the cup, we won it, easy money, and I was the head coach. Very simple, very simple. After meeting with President Volodymyr Zelensky, French President Emmanuel Macron on Tuesday said on, on Tuesday said that diplomatic efforts in the last few days have allowed the emergence of new leads to de-escalate the tensions between Russia and Ukraine. Macron made the remarks speaking to reporters alongside German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Polish President Andrzej Duda ahead of their Wel Wellmar Triangle meeting in, Ber in Berlin. He said the first objective of the ongoing diplomatic efforts is to avoid war and bring peace and stability in Europe, adding that it is our duty to do everything and to preserve it. Macron said the second objective is to defend Europe and its allies, and the third is to defend the principles that have made Europe in the past 30 years. In particular, the respect and the sovereignty of all states, the territorial integrity and the values. The French leader reiterated the importance of dialogue with Russia to avoid any escalation and to build stability and peace on the long run. This comes a day after he met with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow. Putin and Macron indicated further diplomatic steps were possible after their meeting. Hey Wolverines, I'm Jake Camejo and tune in this Friday for my Peace About College tour, what's it like on college campuses, and why you should be attending this tour in the future.
What's up, Wolverines? I'm Chris Bio, and here's your sports for the week. Your varsity soccer team will hold the regional quarterfinals here at home tonight and look to take home a W against Naples. The Wolverine basketball team looks to be menaces on the defensive side tonight, but also to bring home a dub against, Wolf against Terra at Northwestern. Reminder for those seniors attending the game that the bus will be leaving at 4.45 p.m. Wear white for both of these games. Well, we gotta defend. I ain't worried about offense. Just gotta stop them, make sure we get out and run. Last night, our water polo team took home a dub against Ransom with a score of 16-3. A majority of the team scored goals. The Miami Heat played and conquered the Bradley Beal-less Wizards, 121-100. Top performers were Jimmy, Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Head coach Eric Spolstra and former head coach Pat Riley were both named within the top 15 head coaches of all time. What an honor. Speaking of head coaches... The Miami Dolphins have agreed to a deal with the San Francisco 49ers offensive coordinator, Mike Daniel, to make him their next head coach. The team announced this on Sunday. The Dolphins gave McDaniel a four-year contract, as a source told ESPN's Adam Schefter. McDaniel's hiring marks the end of a nearly month-long search for the Dolphins' head coach. NFL commissioner Roger Goodell met with civil rights leader on Monday amid concerns the league isn't doing enough to promote minority coaches. Well, I think it was uh, a good meeting, uh, a start. Uh, everyone in the meeting uh, understand the sense of urgency and the problem that's confronting us. Uh, the Rooney Rule has been in place for a long time, and the measurement of that is, as it relates to head coaches, it has not been as effective as people thought it should be or would be. We're looking now up until just a few days ago, only one African-American coach in the league, uh, uh, African-American coaches, are as can be as successful as any other coach, but they have to be provided an opportunity. And up until this point, they have not been provided an opportunity. The five leaders called on Goodell to replace the so-called Rooney Rule, which mandates football teams to include minority candidates for job openings. While nothing resolved was resolved, the head of the NAACP says the meeting was productive. The meeting comes less than a month week after former Miami Dolphins head coach Brian Flores filed a lawsuit against the NFL and three teams for racial discrimination. Out of the 32 franchise teams, two have black head coaches, one has a multiracial head coach, and two have non-black minority head coaches. Thus, in a league where 70% of the players are African American. More news in the NFL is that the New Orleans Saints have informed their defensive coordinator, Dennis Allen, had gotten the job an, as a new head coach, as well as the Texans who hired the defensive coordinator, Lovey Smith. Now all vacant head coaching jobs have been filled in. Before we head back to the desk, we wanted to give a shout out to Coming up in the injury. Congratulations ago, on the injury. Goal. Now back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Chris. That's all your news for today, Wolverines. Remember to follow us on all our social medias. And stay safe and stay golden, Wolverines.